Yo, what's good, gang? It's your boy Des Reacts, man. We're back with another banger of a video, man. In this one, we got the Marine who jumped onto a grenade, uh, Lance Corporal Matthew Croucher. Uh, this is in February 2008, so I'm assuming it's Iraq, Afghanistan area. And this one was requested by um, Hannah. Shout out to Hannah for supporting the channel, man. This was for you. And, um,. Yeah, this is from Liveth Forevermore. You guys love his videos, man. I like his videos. I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you guys enjoyed the video I dropped yesterday. Um, this one's gonna be pretty crazy. The Royal Marine who jumped onto a grenade. You gotta be pretty, pretty selfless, pretty brave. You know, a little bit of wildness. You know, he's pretty crazy, I'm sure. Jumping onto a grenade, but I'm sure it's for a good reason. So we're about to find out, man. I'm not gonna hold you guys no longer. If you guys like to support the channel, you can. Links right here, links in the bio. We smash that like button, um, hit the subscribe button, and let me know in the comments what other videos you guys want me to uh, react to, and um, just your thoughts and feelings on this video. Um, without further ado, man, let's get it. In September 2007, the Royal Marines of 40 Commando deployed as part of the 52nd Brigade to Helmand Province in southern Afghanistan. The deployment of 40 Commando was an interesting one, mainly because the Marines had only just finished their rotation into the country in April of that year. However, as the unofficial history of Operation Herrick states, the lack of And thank you guys, man. I'm at 3,300 subs, man. Goes to get the 4K soon. Appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Smash that sub button. Army infantry units meant that Marine Battalion had to be borrowed to take 52nd Brigade to full strength. Consequently, for the second time in six months, Royal Marines were on the ground again in Helmand Province, with 40 Commando focusing its operations in the northern regions, namely around the areas of Kajaki, Sangin, and Nauzad. And one thing I know about the Helmand region is that you know, with our soldiers, the U.S. soldiers, Marines, you know, I forget who was occupying that area for our armed forces, but that was a pretty crazy providence. Like, th th this is where, you know, stuff went down. It was nitty and gritty in the trenches, in the mud type thing. Like, it, it was a very brutal area, the Helmand province, from what, I, from what I can remember. To the south of Sangin was Ford Operating Base Robinson where elements of 40 Commando's reconnaissance force was garrisoned. Commenting on the situation around the FOB, a report states, Forward Operating Base Robinson had been targeted relentlessly by the enemy. Complex and highly effective improvised explosive devices had been deployed by the Taliban throughout the Forward Operating Base's area of responsibility. Movement around the FOB was fraught with danger and exceptionally high risk for troops with a vehicle borne or operating on foot. Stationed at the base with a reconnaissance force was Lance Corporal Matthew Croucher, who joined the Royal Marines back in November 2000 and had previously served twice in Iraq, including during the invasion of 2003. Wow, so this is his third tour then. So he did two tours in Iraq and now he's in Afghanistan. Man, like some people, like they... So, I mean, I, I talked to some people, they loved it. Like, it, they thought it was fun, you know, but then there's others that, you know, weren't necessarily doing it because they're enjoying it. They're doing it because, you know, they just felt the compulsion, I guess, like to, to fight for your country, you know, and not, not give up and just do one tour and done. Like, you know, a lot of people do, which respect to all them too, you know, the people that are, you know, just in for their four years. I don't know how long it is in the UK. But here you sign like four year terms and as soon as they're done, man, they're out of here. And this dude, you know, he sounds like he might have reenlisted and stuff and just wanted to fight, man, like with his brothers. Shout out to this dude, man. Badass. Five months into his first tour of Afghanistan on the 9th of February 2008, Lance Corporal Croucher and a detachment of Marines were tasked with conducting a reconnaissance of a Taliban held compound near FOB Robinson, He's a sniper. which intelligence suspected was being used as a manufacturing site for IEDs. Setting off in the early morning hours of the 9th of February, the Royal Marines established a position overlooking the compound. However, from this position, the Marines are unable to identify what the compound is being used for, and so the decision was made to send a small team forward 
to establish if the building was in fact being used to make IEDs. Selected for this mission was Lance Corporal Matthew Croucher and three other Marines, who, utilising their night vision goggles, infiltrated their way to the compound and made a forced entry inside. Ooh, here we go! Although opposition had been expected, the building turned out to be empty, and immediately the team set about gathering anything valuable for intelligence. After 30 minutes on site, the Marines had confirmed that the compound was being used to create IEDs, and with their mission complete, the order was issued for the team to withdraw back to the Overwatch position. Leading this withdrawal was Lance Corporal Croucher, who led the team out from the building and into the courtyard, where, as he recalls, I had night vision goggles, but it was still relatively hard to see. Suddenly I felt a tension below my knee, then I heard the distinctive noise of a fly-off lever ejecting from a hand grenade. In the darkness, I had walked through a four-meter tripwire that led to an old pineapple-style Russian grenade. I knew a grenade like this has a killing circumference of about five meters. Within those precious few seconds, I realized there was nowhere to take cover, and there was certainly no point running because you would catch shrapnel. It was a case of either having four of us as fatalities, or badly wounded, or just one. I thought, I've set this thing off, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to protect the others. Oh no. In an instant, the Lance Corporal realised what was happening and shouted grenade to his colleagues, before using his day sack to pin the grenade to the ground and throwing himself on top. Oh no! Oh, that sucks, bro! Oh my gosh, man! <sighs> Tough, bro. Think about it, bro. So it's nighttime. You're doing a night raid. Night vision goggles aren't like they are today. Like today, no, this is in 2008, you know. Today, night vision goggles are probably, you know, a lot more crisp, more clear, better technology. You could probably do thermal instead, infrared, you know. But he didn't see the tripwire. You know, and he tripped the wire. He heard the, you know, the tink, like the little grenade click, like the pin fall off. And and good, thankfully, you know, his vision, night vision goggles were good enough to see where the grenade was. You know, threw his day sag, like his backpack on it. Which first of all, I, man, he he reacted quick. Like he threw his day sag on, jumped on top of it. And that's where we're at, man. Oh, R.I.P., brother. Lance Corporal Matthew Croucher continues. Mm. I threw my day sack off one shoulder and onto the grenade, and at the Wait same- Wait a minute, he's talking about he didn't die. Oh, man. Time dropped to the ground. Then, pulling my legs up, I tucked my head back so my body armor and helmet would make a shield against the inevitable blast. Seconds later, the grenade detonated underneath the Lance Corporal and in the process, launched him several meters away. Directly behind him, his team leader had dived to the ground on hearing the shout of a grenade, whilst one of the Marines had little time to react and was still standing when the grenade exploded. The fourth Marine, meanwhile, had managed to retire behind a wall and was in cover during the detonation. Lance Corporal Croucher recalls the immediate aftermath. I was lying face down in the dirt. It was total oh. confusion and I was covered in dust. My ears were ringing, my head was spinning, and I had blood coming out my ears and nose. I checked that my arms and legs were still attached and worried about everything else after that. Holy sh snap, bro. Gathering their Oh my gosh, bro, that is crazy. Just imagine, imagine, imagine chat, imagine this, bro. Laying face down. All right, so, so he jumps on the grenade, first of all. It explodes. You, he's launching at least, you know, a couple meters off the ground easily, right? Maybe a meter or so. Who, who knows? Anyways, he can't hear. He's dizzy for sure. He sees blood pouring out of his mouth probably in his ears. His, he, you know, he says arms and legs are attached. It's the first thing everyone looks for, I'm sure. But you guys don't understand. If you guys never played sports, were 
you or landing on your back or something or you just got the wind knock out of you bro you could imagine that in this moment in time he could not breathe at all for a good minute two minutes easily like he his body would not allow him to breathe guaranteed 100 percent if you guys don't know what it feels like to get the wind knocked out of you, let me know in the comments if you guys ever had the wind knocked out of you, man. And it is not a fun experience. I had it knocked out of me several times when I was playing, you know, American football, basketball, all that good stuff, you know. And it it sucks. You're helpless. All you want to do is breathe. And you can't. And I know that's what he was going through. And I know he probably broke some ribs or something. So that's this is crazy, bro. Oh, and by the way, man, shout out to uh, breast cancer survivors, man. Everyone that's fighting through uh, breast cancer. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month inside um, the United States right now. That's why I'm bringing, shouting it out. Um, you women are so strong. Keep fighting it. And if you survived it, man, Desri Axe is proud of you. All right, let's get it. The veterans in the pitch black, dust filled courtyard. Two of the Marines rushed over to the Lance Corporal, checked him over for any wounds prior to helping him up to his feet. Oh. Remarkably, despite throwing himself onto a grenade, Lance Corporal Matthew Croucher had only suffered mild concussion, perforated eardrums, and a few cuts and bruises. He didn't break his... His day sack, on the other hand, had been completely ripped apart. Wow. His body armor and helmet had been peppered with shrapnel. Of the other three Marines, only the team leader had become a casualty when a piece of fragmentation struck him in the face. This, however, proved to only be a minor injury. Wow, man. Say what you want, bro. I don't know who's religious or not. Praise God, man. Like, it, I... That's not a coincidence he survived, man. And I feel like God has a... You know, he had a purpose for him, you know, to share the story, maybe. Or maybe it's for somewhere later in life, but, like... Nine out that's probably like 99 out of 100 times you're gonna die jumping on a grenade just is what it is and he, you know he got the he survived it i hope as soon as he got home i hope he went and bought a lottery ticket and you know won <laughs> if i was that lucky that's what i'd be doing nonetheless had it not been for the actions of lance corporal croucher it is certain that at least three of the marines would have either been killed in action or, or severely seriously wounded. yeah and it was because of this selfless act of heroism that he was recommended for the Victoria Cross. Nice, he got it. However, upon reviewing the case, the Ministry of Defense determined that the George Cross, Britain's highest award for acts of gallantry committed while not under enemy fire, would be more appropriate, since the Marines were not in direct combat with the Taliban. A segment of Lance Corporal Matthew Croucher's citation reads, Before we get into that, please let me know how you guys feel about that in the comments. I, I don't I don't like it. I don't like your guys' government's decision to say he didn't deserve the Victoria's Cross because they weren't getting shot at. I feel like if you run into a tripwire, a grenade, I feel like technically that's enemy fire. They didn't put it there. They're not putting setting booby traps like that. You know what I mean? So it's the Taliban for sure. Like I don't understand how, why that wouldn't count as enemy fire, you know, unless they classify it as literal bullets or something but that's that's some nonsense bro he deserved he deserved the victorious cross like he saved like four or five people and thought he was gonna die himself he he i guarantee you he knew he was gonna die and he didn't that he was willing to risk all in order to save the lives of his comrades is indisputable that he possesses an indomitable fighting spirit is abundantly clear Lance Corporal Croucher is an exceptional and inspirational individual. His magnificent displays of selflessness and gallantry are truly humbling and are the embodiment of the finest traditions of the service. Following the incident, a four-man team conducted a successful withdrawal and linked up with the rest of the Marine Detachment. That's good. No casualty. Or, there's one casualty, but he didn't die. Royal Marines ambushed Taliban patrol, killing one enemy fighter before returning. Nice. Psh. 
man, bro, that was a crazy one, man. Shout out to Hannah for recommending that one. Um, let me know in the comments. Please let me know. Like, do you think he deserved the Victoria's Cross? I for sure thought he did. Um, but hey, I'm not running the UK government for a reason. Because, you know, I don't know nothing about, you know, nothing, I guess. But, um, man, I enjoyed this one. Uh, if you guys enjoyed it, please smash that like button. Leave a comment on your guys' thoughts and feelings on it. Please smash that sub button if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the stream, you can here. Or links in the bio, man. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. It's your boy, Desreacts. Peace.